Breaker Broke 23. So today we're going to take a look at the Anchor SoundSync A3341. This is another one of those Amazon slash PC magazine top picks. This is in the under $40 category. And this is a what Anchor calls a two-in-one. This is a Bluetooth transmitter and receiver. It's advertised as Bluetooth 5, so I'm going to assume that's 5.0. Two-in-one transmitter, HD Bluetooth audio, and um, it doesn't really say, but only in one slight little blip in, uh, gosh, I think it was, uh, I couldn't remember if it was on Amazon's website or on Anchor's website, but it is Aptics HD. So... I had somebody ask me about that, and yes, it is Aptics HD, although they're not very proud of it, or I don't know what's going on. That's actually a little fishy, but anyway, I'll leave a link down below so you can take a look at the specs. I'm not going to really get into that here. So, with the unit, we get the uh, multilingual user's manual. First 11 pages are dedicated to English. We have the little booklet here that wants you to pimp this thing up on social media and then our caution guide here so don't get it wet or it'll explode uh, let's see don't drop it it'll explode etc etc all right then we actually have the unit itself so this is a little tattered but I use these I use the heck out of these things when I'm going over them to review them. I don't just plug them in and use them for a couple hours or a day. I give it its give it a pretty good thrashing. This is the MFB button. MFB is a multifunction button slash on off. This is your TX and uh, RX button. Turns it into a transmitter or a receiver. This is your analog auxiliary input or output and then of course your optical um, input and outputs and the little micro USB port there does not transfer data it only charges this up this has a 350 milliamp hour battery in it and it has, I believe it was a 17 hour rated runtime. They have several runtimes, like 120 hour standby time and 17 hour runtime in one mode and a 12 hour runtime in another mode. I'm gonna tell you, I get 10 to 12 hours out of this thing, no sweat. That's usually um, what I'm looking for. Anything goes past 12 hours is just a bonus as far as I'm concerned. So this is kind of a neat little portable unit. As you guys have seen before in some of my older videos, I don't really like these battery-powered uh, Bluetooth units, but, um, you know, they're getting better each year, so I like them when they're just straight off powered off either an AC adapter or whatever, and you can turn the unit on and off with your stereo or whatnot. There's videos for that on this channel. All right, in the package, we have the optical cable and it's a thin flexible one it's you know decent have the micro USB uh, charging cord no adapter no AC wall adapter comes with this unit and then we have the 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter stereo auxiliary cable and then you can use this cable that comes with it as well to plug into your home stereo home theater receiver which is 3.5 millimeter female in to of course the standard rca male outputs i had a problem with this particular configuration using this together um, introduced a, a hum into my system and i didn't really like that so there's an issue here, I'm going to assume, in this part of the adapter. I don't see this very often, but in this particular case, it is uh, a problem. 
So do something about it, Anchor. Anyway, not a bad unit. I get pretty good range out of this. I get the advertised 30, 33 feet um, in both transmit and receive on various speakers. I use Altec speakers, JBL speakers, Sony speakers, and on and on. And it works pretty good. Um, this is a great unit to use Bluetooth headphones on and watch TV with. Um, almost zero latency with both my Teotronics headphones and my Micus SR71 headphones. That worked out very well. I wish this optical had a pass-through though, so you could integrate maybe like come out of the TV into this and then maybe leave this permanently hooked up to a sound bar or a home stereo or something so you don't have to fidget with the cables if you want to do that but they don't provide us with like a pass-through so that's kind of a bummer um, the analog output of this is low it's darn near half of what I believe it should be any quality Bluetooth unit that has an RC capable RCA output analog audio output should be giving us a preamp level of about two volts RMS and I'm going to I'm going to take a guess because there's no specs for this from this company I'm going to take a guess this is just a little over half of that so I'm going to give it uh, one volt maybe a volt and a half and what I mean by that for new viewers is you have this plugged into your AV receiver or vintage home stereo and say maybe an auxiliary input and then you say have a CD player or a cassette player or DVD VCR they give you an approximate 2 volt output when you flip over to your auxiliary to use this unit um, you have to crank up your volume quite a bit more to equal the volume that you're getting from your other devices Pretty common when you see a unit using stuff like this and in the under $40 range it's to be expected so overall is it worth the money yeah I believe it is I I like this unit despite its shortcomings but it's like I say under $40 so not bad at all if you have a optical input on your AV receiver you can take care of that uh, low output issue by just plugging this into your optical um, input of your AV receiver. If you're like me and use old vintage receivers, then I actually have an outboard DAC. I use the Shit Modi 3. I'll leave a link to that down below. And that takes care of all of this low output issue here. But this is very flexible. You could take this and uh, plug this into your car stereo if you have kind of an older car stereo with. Uh, the auxiliary input port on your faceplate you could use this cable or possibly a longer one and set this on your console or your seat and then stream to that so i'm starting to warm up to these self-powered units in that respect um, i use this on a quite a range of things um, i actually use this on my cb radio to transmit a Bluetooth single signals from my CB so I can just walk around the house and listen. Ham radio, um, I'm a talk radio junkie as well, and I plug this into my Sanjean and um, set this up on top of the Sanjean, pair my Bluetooth speaker to it, and I can walk around the house. Um, now, I, I get it, why would you do something like that? Because, you know, I don't know, they have portable radios nowadays. Well, my Sanjean has a ruthless receiver in it and a very, very good audio signal paired with this. Um, and I, if I'm walking around the house with like my JBL or my little Altec speaker, I get better audio than I could ever, you could ever imagine to get out of, say, uh, a pocket radio. So that's why I do that. So anyway, um, that being said, you could plug this into a Walkman, an old MP3 player, like one of the old school uh, um, Apple units. And that's kind of neat. This will actually um, allow a person to hook up two speakers to it. So you could have um, 
a speaker for each room. You wouldn't want to necessarily use this in like a stereo speaker pair because there is latency from one channel to the other. And, and it's not really a channel. This basically will let you pair a speaker and then you can pair another speaker to it. And some people want to try to get that stereo effect by doing a left and right. The problem is there's latency between these two speakers. And so you're going to get a really uh, gnarly echo effect. And that's obviously not what we want. You could possibly do a couple yard speakers like way out in each end of the yard or something like that if you're having a little get together or something and, and you may not hear the uh, delay quite as bad. Also, when you're paired, um, when you've paired this to um, wireless headphones, so maybe you and a spouse or a friend could uh, wear headphones, you each have a set of headphones on, you would never hear that delay. There might be a little bit of uh, lip sync lag or a little bit of latency between the two. I didn't find it annoying because I did run this with two headphones and um, I was actually impressed with the low latency of this. So as long as you have some modern headphones, it'll all work together. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you guys a brief clip and what I'm talking about, about that low output where uh, by using the analog output, you get a lower output than, say, using the optical through an outboard DAC, which is just another excuse to buy another piece of gear, isn't it? All right. Sounds good. Portable. Low latency. Under $40. This is a thumb up. There you go. Okay. In this little clip, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about uh, when I refer to this low uh, audio output on the analog output of these units. So what I've done is I've got the analog plugged into the receiver. I've got my optical cable that goes to the shit model Modi, sorry, not model, but Modi 3 outboard DAC. That goes into the techniques. And I have the techniques on auxiliary that I'm going to use a tape monitor. Um, for another input, which will work just fine. Um, people sometimes ask, well, aren't the inputs more sensitive and aren't they different? And no, they're not. The only input on like a vintage receiver or really even a modern receiver would be the phono input because that has RIA equalization and it also has a lot more gain, a lot more um, gain to get the signal from the phono cartridge. So. An RCA input on most all receivers are pretty much exactly equal. So let's start up our test piece. And what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to play this through uh, the analog output and at a fixed volume. So we'll go up to like here. And then I'm going to unplug this. When I unplug this, it utilizes the optical output. So that'll go into here. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, here we go.